Hello, welcome to the Legislative Matters meeting um, for, uh, what is it, November what? The, ninth. Is it the, ninth. Is it ninth already? Okay. November 9th. What's new, folks? Um, the uh, This is, as I said, the Legislative Matters meeting. I am City Councilor Bill Dwight. I'm presiding uh, over this, this August meeting. And um, to get things rolling, I'm going to ask Laura if she'd be kind enough to call the roll, please. Sure. Councilor Dwight. Well, I'm here. <laughs> Councilor Mayori. Here. Councilor Shara. Here. And Councilor Thorpe. Here. Um, only a couple items on this agenda, and the um, this is you know this meeting's being held by uh, remote participation. Is if you haven't picked up on that yet, and you can uh, we are recording it as well, and it will be available on Northampton Open Media or NAM. Um, and yeah, all comments and uh, proceedings will be recorded as such. So, full we'll first open it up to public comment. Is there anyone here from the public who would wish to speak on the issue before us, which is the one agenda item? And I, I don't actually see other people here. So, um, I'm going to presume there isn't. And actually, if someone does show up, if no one would mind, if we have the flexibility, we will accommodate them if, if that should be the case. Um, First, uh, I'll accept a motion on the acceptance of the uh, minutes for October 13th, 2020. Motion. So motion. Motion. Okay, motions made by Council Maori and seconded by Council Thorpe. Uh, any discussion on the minutes? Uh, Laura, would you please call the roll for acceptance? Sure. Um, Councillor Dwight. Yes. Councillor Maori. Yes. Councillor Shara. Yes. And Councillor Thorpe. Yes. Okay, those are the minutes. Now to the one item that we have on this agenda. Um, I'm going to ask the indulgence of the other participants, the other members of this committee. Um, Wayne is here for a very short time. He's got a, a drop dead deadline at 5.30 to rush to another Zoom meeting because he clearly can't quite get enough of these things. So um, I'm rather than read the whole order, which I will do, but I would like Wayne to introduce it and explain it um, just in the interest of um, expediency. How's that? Any objections? No. None. Okay. All right. Wayne, the floor is yours. Sure. So I'm going to give you some brief context. Um, so the mayor proposed and city council approved two or maybe even three years ago now a wayfinding capital improvements item. Um, to do a series of wayfinding primarily around downtown to a lesser extent in Florence um, that includes the, all the, the brand new parking signs you see downtown, the new smart garage parking signs. Um, eventually it's going to include uh, bright kiosks, you know, intelligent smart signs and kiosks that we're working on, um, and newspaper boxes. And the idea of the newspaper boxes is um, you know, we believe in freedom of speech. We want there as many publications as possible on the streets, but they do sort of proliferate. We get plastic boxes that blow over in the wind and that look hideous. And the idea is we, the jargon in the field is newspaper condos, even though they're not really condos. But the idea is that we would build more attractive newspaper boxes at key locations, um, and then we would lease those out to anybody who has a newspaper that they want to, to put in them. And in return for that, we wouldn't allow the plastic bo plastic or metal boxes that proliferate all over the place. Um, there's one example of this in town that was not ours, but Smith College did this at John M. Green Hall a few years ago. <clears throat> so they built a box that has, um, those of you who don't know, a broadsheet is a typical, you know, the Gazette, the Republican, the New York Times, so a, a, literally a broadsheet and a tabloid is printed the other way, typically half the size. So we have two broad sheets in the area, which both of which charge, and everything else falls into the tabloid category. So Smith built these for, um, I think it's two broad sheets, no, I'm sorry, one broad sheet and two tabloids. Um, but that's sort of the idea. So we've done an inventory of all the newspapers downtown. We worked with the major publications, so the Gazette and the Republican we've talked to. 
Um, the other publications, many of them have suspended their publication. So there's a lot fewer than there mm. used to be. Um, but you know, that too will pass, they're, they're come back. So we want to go forward in, in doing this. We think it does make downtown more attractive. Florence has only one collection by uh, Florence Diner. So that would also be part of this piece. So it would be downtown and then Florence and just that, that one location out there. Um, so, so it's before you in terms of the regulations, basically saying once the city has a system um, in place, then that's the box that people, that's the system that people will use. Um, we want to be very careful from a freedom of speech issue. This was, was Alan Seawall's main input in the process is, you know, we're not giving preference to anybody. We're not making decisions about winners and losers. Um, as of today, we can accommodate everybody, even if, because there's frankly so many fewer things. So the, you know, the UMass publication has ceased publishing in a physical form. In the last couple of years, they weren't even coming to here. The advocate seems to print I'm not sure there's a schedule. They haven't totally gotten rid of it, but it doesn't print very often. Um, so it's pretty easy to accommodate. Going forward, we would bring new boxes the first time and we would add new ones, you know, on a first come first serve basis in the process. Um, as part of this is probably less your issue, but um, the ownership of, of licensing newspaper boxes would move from DPW who doesn't really want it to the building commissioner's office who's happy to have it in his downtown. And there's some synergy because they're the ones, if someone complains about sandwich board signs, we did the same thing, I don't know, five years ago, sandwich board swap signs switch from DPW to building and buildings obviously doing that. So it, there's a, a synergy in the process. So that's the overall piece. Um, you know, um, we would charge the newspaper boxes, but we're not trying to make money. We're trying to keep the price low enough. We would charge more for broadsheets that need collection because it's just more expensive to have a, a system. They'd be responsible for the maintenance of the box. We would still own them. Um, and everything else is the details, but so tell me how in the weeds you want me to get or, or how you want to go forward. Um, I actually I'll open the floor to questions from counselors. Do anyone have any questions? I have a Council question, Mayori? do we? Um, no, good point. Let's put it on the floor if we're going to discuss it. Fair enough. Is there a motion? We have a positive recommendation. Okay. Is there a second? Okay. Now we can discuss it. And Council Mayor, you you may. Ask. No, I'm just curious. What is what what material are you going to be making the boxes out of? So there, there's off the so we'll be going to bid for this process. Um, if we we need to search a little more. So far, we've only found three companies, and they're all metal boxes with yeah. plexiglass. Things look inside of them. Yeah. You know, the Gazette of the Republican are there, the Gazette of the Republican boxes are more or what they would look like, although those were designed to be only for one publication. Right. Um, but everyone but the Gazette of the Republican, I think, is plastic. So it would definitely be that sort of more durable piece out there. But as we go to bid, you know, it could be that somebody has a quality material that's not metal. I just haven't found that yet. Yeah. Um, I have a second question, but if other counselors, no, uh, you still my, have the floor. My second question is, do you expect pushback from the publications? Uh, you're saying it's not a lot, the, the, the amount that you'd be charging wouldn't be. Yeah, and we, we, we charge a fee right now. So, oh, I mean, you do? I didn't yeah, know that. Yeah, there's people who aren't following the rules, but we do charge a fee right now. Yeah. So when I spoke to the Gazette and the Republican, who are obviously the most active, again, everyone has a right to be there, but they're the ones who are most active as their business model. They were worried of the details, what do we actually charge and would they have enough spaces but they weren't worried overall the republicans since we first had the conversation has on their own even before covid reduced the number of boxes they're using anyway um so no there was no bit made pushback we did not reach out again they all have rights to be there but we didn't reach out to the shoppers weeklies that yeah are out there we did i mean mainly we reached to were i guess i show my bias i like newspapers of, of record right so because at the Republican, I'm totally blanking out on the name, but the UMass paper, yeah, those are the ones who, yeah, we really want to make sure that we would be accommodated. We want to accommodate everyone, but we want to talk to them in particular. Okay, thank you. Other questions? Um, the, now, of course, you also have the real estate magazines and the auto traders and the things like that. And the, um, and a fee, of course, 
as I understand it by law, the fee basically can only be representative of costs associated with maintaining, creating, and and so on. So we, we can't make money off these things. That's, right. uh, um, and there are, um, I mean, would it have the flexibility should, I mean, I don't know, judging by trends, this doesn't seem likely, but it, we would have the flexibility to accommodate um, more uh, than just the two broadsheets and the advocate is a tabloid if, it, if it's a tabloid structure and other uh, papers, other real estate magazines, other publications that would, uh, might possibly arise. Yes, so the idea was to reduce the number of sites. They have sort of proliferated all over the place, um, but not, you know, if we measured how far apart these should be, they don't need to be every 20 feet, um, but we would certainly want to have enough of them spread around town. We should be able to accommodate every single publication at a couple locations. Um, so, um, we did a projection of sites. I'm sorry, I'm looking up at the ceiling to see this, but so we're reducing our current plan is to go to seven locations. Um, uh, I'm sorry, it goes off my screen. To go to 10 locations, including in Florence. Um, so nine spread around downtown. Um, uh, so th they would actually often be larger. So at um, Pulaski Park, for example, there's three plastic newspaper boxes between the bus shelter and the road. That's the area you could squeeze in a lot over there. So we would be doing um, sort of the larger piece. So I'm gonna use that one as an example. So the, again, the broadsheets are wider. Um, so we would probably Plasky Park do two broadsheets side by side because the tabloids are half the size. That means you could accommodate four tabloids. So Pulaski Park, you'd have a total of six publications. Right now, there's only three, but some places we would be getting rid of them as we consolidate them. But yeah, there'd, there'd be a lot of locations and everyone should have good visibility regardless of what the publication is. And, and you, you're saying that the, the lessees would be responsible for maintenance and care of the boxes? Yeah, not, so the, not the physical box. It's, you know, the box, it would be owned by condo. the city if you're responsible, but sort of, right. you know, graffiti on the outside of the box, trash right. on the inside of the box, those kinds okay. of things. Okay. The, the standard insults that are visited upon these things. And then, yeah, right. okay. Right. But we, w the city is responsible for maintaining the, the condo, if you will, the, yes. the main shell. Okay. Yeah. That's, that was the part that was causing me some confusion. Right. Um, I mean, we were saying they have to have the surface area of their box free of graffiti. So that's sort of the routine piece. That's theirs. But yes, as parts break down, their city-owned equipment will be responsible for that. And, and last thing, just I don't want to get too nudgy, but I'm, this is actually a concern. ADA compliance, accessibility at a level that someone in a wheelchair, for instance, could access, uh, not stacked multiple tiers that puts some publications out of reach and thereby making them um, less successful and less desirable based on their, their, their place in the condo. Yeah, so they, they all are, again, I, don't, I can't tell you offhand, frankly, what the measurements are for ADA access, but they're all meeting standards. They're all specific, you know, because these are made by fewer companies, in some ways it's better because as a set standard, they're not just sort of right. the plastic you put in your backyard for doing. So, I mean, certainly the, the one that Smith College has at John M. Green is one of the two companies that we're most likely to use. And yes, if you're in a wheelchair for that, you could easily reach the broad seat, sheet that's the higher one and then the two tabloids that are the lower ones. And, and are we responsible for clearing the snow, for instance, in front of these things? Um, uh, if, because if we require businesses downtown to shovel the snow, it's, it's possible they could just shovel it into a snowbank, thereby making it accessible to everybody. So we're not responsible for clearing the snow now. That wouldn't change. Um, okay. It's not always done, but building owners are responsible for snow from the curb to their building front. Again, not that it's always done, but that wouldn't change the process. Okay. Uh, any other questions? Um, 
in we've been joined by Councilor Nash and also uh, the solicitor. Uh, Alan is here as well. Um, I have yet to read the ordinance yet, but with the uh, for Councilor Nash and Council and Solicitor Seawall, who was a councilor, spelled differently. Um, we we allowed Wayne. He has some time constraints, so we allowed Wayne to basically give us the thumbnail sketch of this, and then uh, open it up to questions. Um, now, Councilor Nash, you are not a member of this committee, but you uh, are a member of the public in that respect. If you have questions, or Alan, you have questions or comments about this, um, you're free to share those with us. I will assure the counselors that uh, Wayne and I have gone back and forth on this several times. So this is something that I have looked at uh, more than once. Okay. And you're comfortable with it as-, as I'm comfortable with it, yes. Okay. Councilor Nash, any thoughts? Yeah, I'm good. I'm making dinner. I'm listening to this like I'm listening to NPR. So this is <laughs> wow. I, you- Great, it's you very entertaining. Sad, very sad. Yeah, Councilor Nash, you ever heard the term get a life? <laughs> well, <laughs> it's it's it. It's it. wow. Um, this, wow. Okay. All right. All right I'll, um, I'll go back to cooking dinner. <laughs> yeah, go go for it. Enjoy. Um, well, all right. Begging everyone else. Uh, further indulgence, I'm going to read the ordinance as it stands so that if we, if we, uh, Wayne's still got a few minutes with us. So if you have any questions as a result of that, I'm going to disappear and you're just going to see me with my jaunty little cap in my photo there while I read this to you. So bear with me. Um, there we go. So in the year 2020, upon the recommendation of the mayor and the planning and sustainability, an ordinance of the city of Northampton, Massachusetts, providing the chapter 285 code of ordinances, city of Northampton, Massachusetts, be amended by adding section 285-31. Uh, parentheses, newspaper boxes, close parentheses, of said code to encourage the availability of publications consistent with public safety and public use of sidewalks and public spaces. Um, section 285-31 newspaper boxes. A, the purpose of this ordinance is R, one, to prevent the unlimited proliferation of private news racks that cause visual clutter, reduce pedestrian safety, and negatively impact city aesthetics. Two, to replace individual private news racks with publicly owned multi-rack newsstands that provide available space for all types of publications. Three, to promote the public health, safety, and welfare, and the aesthetic qualities of the city by controlling the placement, size, construction, and appearance of news racks. B, we have definitions, as the newspaper box means, shall mean a container used for dispensing a publication to the public at a uh, fee or no charge. Two, a broadsheet, the largest newspaper format, characterized by the long vertical pages, typically 22.5 inches, and typically stored in a newspaper box with a fee collecting mechanism. Three, a tabloid, a newspaper having pages half the size or smaller of those of broadsheet newspaper. C, use regulations. Privately owned, uh, one, I'm sorry, privately owned newspaper boxes may not be placed on city sidewalks or any public property. Two, the city provides public newspaper boxes with spaces available for lease for both broadsheet and tabloid publications on a space available basis. D, the use of public newspaper boxes. One, Publishers shall apply to the Northampton Building Department for a uh, box space and city-owned newspaper box on the form prescribed by the Building Department, including preferences for newspaper box locations. Two, the Building Department shall annually allocate space at a public newspaper box locations using <clears throat> the following. A, first, renewing requests for existing permittees in good standing for their existing space, and then in parentheses, or for the first year, permitted box, uh, private boxes on the public way, close parentheses. B, then on a first come, first served uh, basis based on the uh, date of receipt of a completed application. C, if applications received simultaneously exceed available boxes, a lottery drawing to determine allocation of available remaining public newspaper box spaces. D, if Public newspaper box spaces become available during the year. The building department may allocate them to applicants using the same procedures as their annual allocation. 
Number three, registration and fees, excuse me, regulate, uh, registration and fees shall be due and payable on an annual basis upon the building department's annual allocation of the newspaper box space. A, publication shall pay an additional annual registration fee to the city based on fee per box for tabloid publications, smaller size boxes, and fee for broadsheet publications, those are the larger size boxes with fee collected. Uh, B, the mayor shall annually set the application annual registration and, if applicable, uh, box retrieval fees for private boxes removed from the street. E, the city shall install public newspaper boxes in downtown Northampton and Florence Center subject to the exact location and relocations approved by the Department of Public Works. F, one public, uh, once public newspaper boxes have been installed, publishers shall be notified to occupy the new boxes and to remove all freestanding news racks within 30 days of the notification. Freestanding racks are not allowed to coexist on sidewalks with public newspaper boxes. Private newspaper boxes not removed within 30 days of notification shall be removed by the building department and the city is under no obligation to store private boxes after the removal. If the city does store any private boxes or any box retrievable, retrieval shall require the payment of a box retrieval administration fee, administrative fee. G, newspaper box licenses shall be responsible, licensees shall be responsible for the maintenance of their door, door operation, fee collection box if applicable, and inside of their newspaper box space. Newspaper boxes shall not be used for or containing advertising logos or for uh, publicity purposes other than that associated with the dispensing of the publication contained in the box. Public newspaper boxes shall be kept in a reasonable, clean, neat, and rust-free condition with at least 90% of the surface area free of graffiti and weekly cleaned to remove all litter inside under and around the box. Newspaper box permit holders shall hold the city of Northampton harmless from all claims for damage whatsoever arising from the use of public newspaper boxes and provide a certificate of insurance documenting workers' compensation coverage and $10,000 to $100,000 of property damage with the city named as the additional insured. And lastly, I, public uh, newspaper boxes not used and or not maintained for 30 consecutive days, not used for the publication shown on the registration form, or for which no annual fee is paid will be considered abandoned, and the building department may rescind the public uh, newspaper box permit, space permit, and reallocate the space within seven days written or email notice to the uh, address shown on the newspaper box registration. Um, okay, I'm, gonna, I'm back. So, uh, did everyone enjoy that? Everyone's still conscious. All right, good. Um, any other further comments or discussion on these items? Let's listen, uh, Councilor Shara. Um, so if that 10% of graffiti that's allowed, is there, if um, if it was something particularly egregious or, you know, that we'd want to have dealt with, is there any, is there any recourse for having that dealt with um, less than 30 days? Well, there are boxes, so we always reserve the right to clean the graffiti up, okay. and we can certainly call someone. It's really just, we want to stay, the reality is boxes are going to get tagged a little bit, and we just didn't feel like we could have a zero tolerance policy. But we can certainly clean them up, and we could ask someone to clean it up if they're below. Okay. Tell us Thorpe, you look like you have a question. I do. So the publishers who rent the boxes, they're not going to be fined for graffiti in excess uh, there's no real enforcement mechanism is there the main force mechanism is losing your space in the box losing your space right so but they won't be fined no okay, okay. and and uh solicitor seawall the, the kind of amorphous language of things like reasonably neat is that does that work in these circumstances Reasonable is a, a well-used standard in the law. Which is, could mean anything, though. I think that you and I know what reasonable means in the circumstance, just like we know what a reasonable driver does and what a reasonable doctor does. 
yeah, in both cases, not kill people, but that's not a particularly <laughs> high standard. So they, that, and I think that uh, it's okay. It's not, I'm not going to get hung up on it. It was one, th it's something, if you're all right with it, because, you know, one person's reasonable is another person's, what the hell are you talking about? You know what I'm saying? So, um, but. But when the so phrase far is as, reasonably free of garbage, we know what reasonably free of garbage means. That means right. not every piece of garbage is always not there, but when you're there in this garbage, you're going to pick it up. And that's kind of reasonably free of garbage uh, means. So, and the enforcement agency in this case is the building department. Okay. Any other questions? So the motion is to uh, move this forward to the council with a recommendation of approval. Um, uh, Laura, would you call the roll on that? Councillor Dwight. Yes. Councillor Mayori. Yes. Councillor Shara. Yes. And Councillor Thorpe. Yes. Well, that is passed and that will move forward to the council for for another deep deliberation. So um, there is no new business. There's one item left on the on the agenda, and that's up to you guys. Motion to adjourn. Motion made by Councilor Thorpe, seconded by Councilor Shara. Uh, all of well, no. God damn. Uh, Laura, <laughs> would you please call the roll? Councilor Dwight. Bye, Wayne. Yes. Councilor yeah. I'm sorry. Councilor Mayori. Yes. Councillor Shara. Yes. And Councillor Thor. Yes. All right. We were adjourned. Thank you all very all much. And we'll, Wait, before we'll... you go, including Jim, Councillor Thorpe, can you attend on Thursday? Yes. I can. Did you see my email? I did. Councillor Mayori? Yes. Yes, I'm available. Awesome. Councillor Nash, you're muted. You can nod. Thumbs up. <laughs> Are yeah. you eating? Yes. What? Sorry. Excellent. <laughs> Let's go to Jim's house. Councilor Thorpe, if you didn't see the email yet, it's um, a special meeting. Sorry, five thirty on Thursday. Good. I think we'll be. Okay. Great. Thank you. Uh -huh.